we are getting a 63 year old man and hospitalized with systemic bacterial infection secondary to obstructive uropathy on second day note second day age 63 to be noted he developed shortness of breath and progressive hypoxia okay so let's presume that he developed ARDS. Well, the question has been made very simple. We presume the patient has developed ARDS, which following parameter will be normal. Answer is pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. It means, we can say otherwise, all the other parameter will be abnormal except one, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Friends, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is normal in ARDS. This again a golden line to remember. Whenever you will be getting question on ARDS, quite likely they will talk about uh, PCWP, that is pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, which is normal. Repeating second time is a golden line to remember. But let's discuss more detail. The key word in this R, we are getting a 63 year elderly person, bacterial infection, second day of hospitalization, shortness of birth, progressive hypoxemia and finally he said, he told you that we are dealing with the case of ARD, ARDS. So these patients are sign and these patients have sign and symptom of ARDS. Sepsis is a major risk factor for ARDS. Very, very important. Like in this patient, he got pneumonia and after that it, he's developing ARDS. Okay. Well, Again, a simple question for you. Here, what he said is sepsis is a major risk factor for ARDS. Sepsis means back, some we presume that some bacterial infection is there. Now the question is, tell me which parasite infection of which parasite can also lead to ARDS? Quickly write down the answer in your copy. Which parasite can also lead to ARDS? Well, the answer is plasmodium. Falciparum. Which can lead to AI, which can lead to cerebral malaria. which can lead to ARDS, okay? So, answer is plasmodium falciparum. Let's come back. Well, we continue our discussion about ARDS. One of the diagnostic criteria of ARDS is absence of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Well, cardiogenic pulmonary edema is due to some, usually due to some cardiac condition like acute myocardial infarction okay well when we say about this cardiac pulmonary edema pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is usually normal in ARDS and in cardiac pulmonary edema this is increased so elevated wedge pressure is suggestive of cardiogenic pulmonary edema like what we get in pulmonary venous hypertension. In pulmonary venous hypertension, we may get cardiac edema, which we get in, in acute MI also. So to summarize, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is normal in ARDS and this is increase in cardiac cardiac pulmonary cardiac pulmonary edema due to this reason because the pulmonary capillary wet pressure is normal in ARDS this ARDS the other name is non cardiogenic
pulmonary edema. Very, very important point. Cannot forget this line. But again, I have a lovely question for you. Write down the answer in your copy. I would mentioned to you that sepsis is the cause of ARDS. I just now had also discussed that even uh, it can, can, can occur in Plasmodium falciparum. Now tell me a beautiful question. In which type of drug abuse? Which drug abuse can lead to ARDS? Write down the answer quickly in your copy. Which type of drug abuse? This is heroin. Toxicity is a well-known cause and very frequently asked question in all the exam. Cannot afford to forget heroin toxicity. So we come back. Well, I've got one more. We have been talking about pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Yeah. And that we just told you this is normal in ARDS in case in cardiac pulmonary edema. But what does this major? It is the measurement of what? Of course, this is a pressure. But pressure of what place is pulmonary capillary wet pressure? Write down the answer quickly in your copy. It measures pressure of what? Well, this is the pressure of left atrial pressure, LA pressure. And we use a Swengans catheter. Catheter to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Well, in these cases, work of breathing increases in ARDS. In fact, sudden onset of dyspnea. Dyspnea is a feature. Lung compliance is reduced. Okay, that's why it is also known as stiff lung. Capillary permeability is increased and VQ mismatching occur. They are all abnormal. So abnormality occur in all these. Okay. So let's talk more detail about the, all the four options I just mentioned above. And that you will understand when you learn the basic pathology and pathophysiology of ARDS. So ARDS is characterized by diffuse injury to the pulmonary vasculature endothelium and or alveolar epithelium. Primarily it's a injury to the endothelium and endothelial lining, okay. So this is the alveolus, A for alveolus. This is arteriole, pulmonary arteriole. So basically there's increased permeability of pulmonary capillaries and a leaky alveolar capillary membrane. So large number of fluid will leak into this. Some leakage may occur from here also. Ultimately, it is the interstitial space which is full of full of the protein-rich fluid. And that's why the lung becomes stiff, I told you. Stiffness of the lung occurs. That's the reason they call it stiff lung also. So lung compliance decreases because of interstitial and intraalveolar. Some amount of intraalveolar and mainly interstitium. Edema, which I mentioned, I'm showing you edema, all is all edema. Inflammation, inflammatory cells will be there and finally, and that make hyaline membrane formation. This high amount of protein will make a hyaline membrane of course, that membrane is there and ultimately that will hamper the uh, oxygenation because it's all, uh, it's the, all interstitium is full of protein rich fluid. So, oxygen cannot go in. Definitely. Why? Oxygen is a water insoluble gas. But CO2 can come out very easily. So, oxygen cannot go in. Oxygen cannot go in. 
but CO2 can very well come out because CO2 is a water soluble gas and that's the basic reason why we get type 1 failure that's the reason why we get type 1 failure in ARDS okay so when this all is happening this lead to increased work of breathing which I mentioned in the previous slide decrease oxygen diffusion capacity again the reason I told you oxygen is a water insoluble gas it cannot diffuse and severe involvement or or maybe there may be atelectasis of regional alveoli can cause weak mismatch also decrease ventilation with maintained perfusion or they may be uh, reduce perfusion also so all different type of pathology weak mismatch can occur maybe ventilation there no perfusion or sometime atelectasis occur that can lead to perfusion and no ventilation anyway weak mismatch occur so option a b c are ruled out they all will be abnormal so golden line to remember pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is typically normal in ARDS if it is elevated this indicate cardiac pulmonary edema this is a very very important line don't forget 99% whichever exam you write in the world you'll be getting this line in one way or other so golden line to remember well I hope you like the session just to inform you we have following courses for you smart medicine there are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject covering A to Z including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB medicine and family medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much. God bless all of you.